let's get the so what's this for then before you record it? What's what's your oh, plan? Oh, I started it. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> it doesn't matter. It's best to joke anyway, so we're not like formal. We well, don't I could ask the question, can't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'd like to welcome Sharon Barber today. She's a well-known author who lives in Newport. Um, she's written several books. So she's, psych she's a psychic medium. She holds workshops and um, does regular meetings. Uh, I've attended one of her workshops and it was just marvelous. It was really good and I actually got um, a message which was correct. <laughs> I'm not that psychic <laughs> anyway, but I got this message. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, well, yeah, oh, yeah, it was, it was so, a while ago, wasn't it? You know, that was just from one meeting, you know. So, let alone if you attend regularly Sharon's uh, workshops, uh, you'll get so much out of it, uh, out of the workshops. So she's a, a, a medium, and she's a, a husband is amazing. He's um is sort of nearly blind isn't he and yeah partially sighted partially yeah. sighted but his artwork is just out of this world isn't it out of this world yeah um, he's led by but, spirit yeah i know i don't know how he does it it is like whoa um so i'd like to welcome sharon so it's lovely to see yeah. sharon and obviously we haven't seen you since you were te you came as a speaker to my last UFO meeting. Yes, yeah. Had in yeah. 2019. And wow. <laughs> that was a wonderful day, wasn't it? It was so... Um, it was, yeah. It was... Very uh, interesting. I know, it was like a... It was like a mini festival, wasn't it? It was warm, and the en I think it was the energy created by the spirit world, isn't it? It was like... That kind yeah. Of that kind of energy it was like oh, it was and marvelous. having people there that want to be in that environment and learn and talk about yeah. the experience and, and uh, believe and i just want to say we're having the next ufo meeting uh in june 5th of june 2021 and hopefully the covid thing will be over by then um haven't got the um venue yet because the venue where i uh, uh, you know proposed to have it that's gone out of business oh no hey it's the st melons hotel it's gone out of business oh. Oh. so it's a it's a beautiful building really nice room um i don't really know i think it'll probably turn into flats and houses oh, the same lot it's gonna be so many changes so I'd like to uh, welcome you again, Sharon, and maybe if you could start, we're, we're just going to be casual, you know. Um, okay. So we're going to start, if you could tell us your story and how you started, and then April will take over. Oh, yes, I'd like to announce April, who's a co-host, and she's a well-known astrologer, and she's traveled the world, she's, you know, she's been to 40 countries, you know. And, She's a wow, <laughs> and she's a uh, an author as well. Um, ex military, ex military. So she she knows about the secrets that the the, the um, air force would have had because she worked on the in a particular um, systems. A particular what what was system was it? I was in aerospace systems. Well, oh wow, you we know all about the UFOs then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She <laughs> She could tell you lots of stories about UFOs, I'm sure. <laughs> you know. yeah, and uh, uh, I co-edited Chalice as well. Oh, God, yeah. You're a, a really yeah. well-known um, magazine that we had here in um, New Newport. And it was kind of the first um, and wow. type of magazine, oh, wasn't it? West as well. Glass yeah, first. It was a, a really wonderful time, wasn't it? In the sort of uh, late nineties, <laughs> early nineties, it was. Yeah. Huh? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, late nineties, wasn't it? And early nineties. So, hmm? Early nineties, it was. Yeah. What time? Time goes. Sorry, back to you, Sharon. I'm like, sorry. I was interested in this then. Yeah, no, no, so we've all done. So we've all got, all got different things and experiences. Yeah, and... yeah. So uh, yeah, start please. Well, my 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 spiritual journey as a whole 
I didn't realise until I hit my 40s actually started in my childhood because you, you have things happen to you as you go back through time. Um, and I didn't actually come into the mediumship healing side of things until I was in my 40s. So I lived a, quite a full life up to that point. And within that life, I had strange things happen like um, for some reason I believe Jesus was an alien. Um, I was brought up in a Christian stroke Catholic background. My mum was Catholic, my dad was Christian, but I was brought up in the Christian faith. And I had all these things coming to me, which nobody told me. It was just stuff I seemed to get. And I, I now realise that was part of my path, that sparking off the interest about UFOs, aliens, ascension beings. And then as I went through my childhood to my teens, I started to experience spirit. Um, I had some experiences, as in I saw, um, felt, and was pushed by one. So I had sort of different experiences like that. And I also saw a UFO, um, which was actually in Loughborough. And if you look at the date in um, 1970, I think it was 78. Is actually, I actually looked it up a while ago actually, and there was other sightings and actually made the local newspaper. So we had a night of excitement in Loughborough in <laughs> the Midlands. <laughs> um, and it was just things like that happened. I had experiences where I went back in time, I'd be standing somewhere and I'd be seeing different things. Never really thought about it, I just moved on with my life. And then when it came, I came to my 40s, um, I, I, um, I worked in, with my husband, I started working with my husband who ran a, a graphic design marketing agency and we moved into a new premises who was next to a lovely lady called Jane who was a holistic healer and by chance we just got chatting now and again and I told her about a dream I'd had all through my life and it was so specific and so vivid um, and I said to her, strangely, I felt like I've lived it and she was a past life aggression and she said to me, you need a past life regression. And I went, oh, no, 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 weird person. I don't want that. And went back to my office. And something kept nagging me. And I went back to her. And I said, okay. I'd had hypnotherapy. And she said, well, it's like going into a meditative state. And you bring forward what's your experiences. So I did it. And I brought forward the story of this life. And that's what triggered it all for me. My interest grew. And I did Reiki. Um, Reiki one and two, I did meditation, sat in a Reiki meditation circle for three years, did mediumship. Um, and then I just, it just grew from there. And I had, there's other things that's happened in between. I went, I came out of it for two years and I went back into it and it led me back in. Um, and yeah, and then it was just started to become half of my life, the work built of that. And then in six years ago, when I was, um, I just started working as a medium myself, still developing, you always develop, you never stop. Um, so I was drawn to a trance workshop. I don't know if you've heard of trance. Um, and I sat in this trance workshop with this teacher, some other students. Never, I knew a little bit about it, but not a lot. And the first thing she did was go, take us into a meditation and I felt this being the guide come around me who I'd felt before his name was Harold he told introduced himself to me I vividly saw him in the meditation I felt like my arm had been taken over by him and I could see a feather and he took me to a monastery with brick ceilings and little desks and they were doing these beautiful books, you know, those books back from the medieval times of the manuscript books of all the colours. And he was doing that. And he said he was a philosopher of his time. And that was his earth life. And he told me, I'm going to write a book. So we finished the meditation and everybody was going, oh, yeah, I felt this. I felt the light. You know? And I'm thinking, I don't say I have just had this, <laughs> this vivid thing. I've been told I'm going to write a book. So I didn't say anything. And then. After that, I had a couple, I had a reading with a medium who said, you're going to write a book. And then another friend said, you're going to write a book. And then a very good friend, stroke, experienced medium came up to me one day. So you've got a feather in your hand. You need to write that book. 
and this was over six months and then being a graphic designer I work on the computer every day or I used to um, so I was sitting at the computer one day and I got a, a Word document Microsoft Word um, my background is I'm actually severely dyslexic and maths blind so if I wrote any emails for the company to an important client, my husband always had to read it for me just to check and thank God for spell check, that's all I can say. And then, um, so I, I sat at the computer and the, um, I sarcastically said to my guides, okay, come on then, what's this all about then? What's this book? And I heard the voice say, you know, you, we'll give you the title. So they gave me the, the word utopia. Well, I couldn't spell it, so I had to look it up. <laughs> Didn't even know what it meant. <laughs> Looked up utopia, got it in. I said, what now? And they said, write your name. Okay, so I wrote my name. I said, what now? And they said, wait, we'll bring you all the information. And then, I don't know if you've seen me on Facebook, I lost my dog Boyd about a month ago. He was a dog, a golden retriever that was bought to me for my spiritual work I've discovered in the last couple of years. And I used to walk him down a ream and I started to get this information coming in. And I couldn't remember it when I got back home. And I said to my husband, well, they're trying to give me the book and I don't know what to do. I can't remember it. And he said, well, you've got a recording on your phone. So I used to record it and I used to type it up when I got a minute. And that's basically how the first book came about. And then since then, I've done eight. I've just finished my ninth book. It's up at the editor at the moment. And each time I wrote, write a book, it's now mine straight to keyboard. So the connection with the channeling has grown and grown and grown to the point where they just channel straight head to keyboard. And the last book I wrote, um, I actually managed to spell a lot of it correctly. <laughs> and um, it's almost like it's brought my own... I don't know, literature, I suppose, words. You know, I've actually improved myself. But one of the things I learned from that is that from a young age, I was told I wouldn't really amount to much because of my, they saw it as a disability back then. But I did amount to much. I ran a company and I did this and did this, but I didn't see it. So I was actually stopped. So when I was told I was going to write a book, I was stopping myself doing it because I thought I wasn't able to. But they, I had faith then in my guides. And once I allowed and trusted the, the path, um, it started to flow. And of course now it's just instant. Once I sit down, it's just straight there and down it goes. And then they had to do something called editing and they edit it and they edit, edit it everything. So when I write a book, I keep going back over like the first section, the next chapter, the next chapter, and eventually one day we're at the end and they go, that's it, it's finished. And I go, okay. <laughs> and I read it and I read, I, don't, I read the last one before it went to the editor and it's just, it's, you know, and um, I read it and I, it's like reading it anew because I haven't written it. I can't explain it to you. It's come from my guides. So. Yeah, so Sharon, have you got some of some of your books you could show us? Yes, I did actually get some off the shelf. Um, so Utopia was the first book I wrote. I think you might show around the other way, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, that's not fine. Really. Yeah, we can see that, um, yes. Th this one was about um, the way they work with us. Um, it's got some stories in it of how people have had their own experiences with spirit. They also talk about UFOs, um, evidence on Earth, of what's been left for us to find. And there's also some inspiration writing in it, and it's a real mixture. It's a book for those starting out on the spiritual path who really haven't read much, but it would trigger their imagination to read more. It's like a starting point. Um, the next book I wrote... So how much is that, uh, Sharon? Um, they're on Amazon anywhere between from about eight to ten pounds. They go very slightly. I do sell them on my own website, but I can give you all that at the end if you want. Um, so I wrote the first book, and I thought that must be it now. You know, 
job done. <laughs> then they said, no, there's a next book. And they did exactly the same. They give me the title, tell me to write my name, and then they say, we'll give you the information. So this book is about how spirit work with us, the signs from spirit. And it's got something called the alphabet, spirit alphabet. So it's like um, for L, they put the word listen. And then they write, um, they, it, it's like they put it from the spirit point of view. They use the word to bring forward their wisdom and their message. Um, so again, this is the next stage on. So if somebody comes to me and to have some awareness, I'll say, but they don't know much about the spirit world. I'll say, well, this is the book for you. And then the follow on from that, which is to bring in the positivity was something called the magic of words. And that really is about how to be positive, your own mindset, the yin and yang of the world. And again, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a huge one. It's probably the smallest of all of them. It's got inspiration writing in it. But it's just a book that makes you think about how you use your language, your mindset. It's got mindfulness, meditation. It touches on all sorts of things just to make you, again, to trigger you into looking for more, to trigger you on that path. That is um, really good. It's, it's the words, isn't it? We don't realise it when we, when we speak, well, do we? Well, so, yes. It, yeah. They, you know, our thoughts are such, you know, our minds, we are made of energy, vibrant uh, frequencies, um, our thoughts, our energy, our power. So, you know, if we, if we wake up thinking, oh my God, today's going to be an awful day, well, you've just written your day. But if you wake up and think, right, I'm going to be good at that and just be positive. And then if something does come in the day that isn't so positive, you just have to really try and oh, not overthink it and say, okay, I've got to let that go and move on. And it's easy to sit here and say that because obviously if you're a bit down or suffer with mental health, it's not as easy to do that. Um, so I do understand that because I've been there myself with mental health um, through postnatal depression. So I do understand that, but then even people with mental health difficulties, so they could have that holistic approach as well as medication, um, it would really help them. And it, it's really, they, they do have a list of words in here, if I can find it. So, oh yeah, here it is. So it's like um, nothing. So the neg negative is nothing, but the positive is plenty. Um, degrade uplift jail sanctuary deflate inspire hit hug sly honest and it just really is that yin and yang isn't it um you know and if you you know i sometimes i hear somebody talk negatively about somebody and i, I used to be like that um you're just dragging in that negative energy and that thought process so what i do now if somebody upsets me um I perhaps have the normal human feelings like, oh God, you know why? And then I think, well, hang on, I need to send them some love. So I go, I send them some love through gritted teeth. <laughs> and I find if I do that every day, eventually I'm sending it genuinely with love because I can feel my energy shift about them. And I, I just said to people, in, in situations where there's a bad relationship or somebody's struggling, if you try and send healing remotely to that situation, and you've got to give this a little bit of time, it's not instant, you, suddenly you don't hear about it anymore because it's all resolved and, you know, and it's just that, that thought process, the spiritual side of we can help people. Our mind is very, very powerful. Um, the next book, I think I've got them in order. Yeah, Adeline. So Adeline is about my soul. And my soul's journey and in incarnations. Um, I've I've actually had four past life regressions. So Sharon, where where what? where do you think you you come from? Where do you come from? And how is it you've got this connection? And um, I am from. All I know so far is I'm from a planet, not a dimensional realm. So I'm actually from another planet. Um, I've seen my soul in form and it's not human. Um, she showed me her face and she has like a bump here and 
hair that comes out the bump. So that's my higher self. Um, I've never been given the actual home source planet. So I've not had that yet. But um, I also know that I've had past life experiences through her journey on another planet called Castrolian. Um, and that's in the book. Um, and how I discovered that was I had a past life regression and at the end of it, I was taken to my soul group and then I was asked to go into my next life and that was on that planet. And that really blew my mind because I hadn't even thought at that stage in my spiritual journey that I could actually possibly have had another <laughs> soul existence. Cause, um, but, but do you know if you've got other people from your planet here on Earth? No, I don't so know Can you that. see, if you see somebody, can you then say, oh, that person, oh, I have um, a connection with no, that person? No, I've not, I've not experienced it that way. Um, I do do soul connection as part of my um, development, and I've experienced through that, um, there's different types of beings that come here, but there's also, they come here for different purposes. It's not just to to um, learn lots of things. They could be here to collect energy or different reasons. From my own point of view, I understand I have a soul group. Now, going back in my early days, I thought there was just one spirit realm we understand as heaven, yeah? Um, and that these beings are there and they come down and we all go back up there. As I've progressed through my books and my knowledge with spirit and my trance work, is that we come from different dimensional, the souls, higher selves, come from different dimensions, different realms and planets. Now, some people might dispute this because if you're living on a planet, you're normally physical form like we are. But these are high ascension beings. They've gone through what we've gone through, the third heavy dimension energy. They've progressed into fourth. They've become more loving and kind. As we change the way we think and the way we act, we will become more multi-transdimensional beings. And that means that eventually, at some point in our ascension and our, our um, development as humans in the future, we will be able to separate ourselves like an essence of ourselves off from our body we won't need a soul anymore we'll have our own ethereal essence that we're about to travel and then do incarnation as well so these beings that are in this high level don't have incarnated souls like we do but they can come support earth and say okay i'll have this experience and see how i can help earth the other type of souls are the ones that are what we understand as light beings. So they don't really have the physical form, they have the light energy forms, they have consciousness, um, existence, they have purpose, they, they must live their lives in whatever, how they live them. But they also can come and be a soul connection. So I don't know. <laughs> April, you. do you have any <laughs> questions for Sharon? <laughs> Wow. Wow. wow what what can you say after that that is amazing isn't it to have all that um channeled through well one thing i i can ask is who do you think you are here to serve sharon with all your I'm here to, coming through everything i'm here to serve okay so how i've had the existence of the universe described to me because they describe it in the human form because we could not understand it until we go back to source and even then if I go back to my physical source I might not have that awareness of some of the higher dimensional beings um, I feel I serve well I write about it the, the Right, let's start at the top, start at the top hierarchy. There's some beings called overseers and they oversee the universe. I, I can't even, I've never seen them or pictured them, but it was what we'd understand as the God energy, the source. Does that make sense? Okay. So obviously with the religions, we see one God, we see Jesus, but they explain it that there's more than one of them. They come from an existence they have their 
the way they are they can be in millions of places at once in consciousness so it's it's way beyond it gives me headache thinking about it actually and then they in the universe is light and dark and they're they work in the light or they try to work in the light and the overall purpose is to bring new forms new humans new physical beings into this light and integrate them into this way of being and to help other new planets and other existences to be in and it, it becomes love kindness compassion and they work in this environment um they then thought about something which they told me is called like an intergalactic council so we're now getting into the sci-fi i call it um where they they bring so this is like a council if you can imagine a council of beings so they've got the overseers who oversee them they exist in many forms through physical through to light multi-dimensional beings some beings can be multi-dimensional transcensional beings but can actually take physical form so they can where they need to go they can be understood so i've had that explained to me and they then um work with various planets and various um galaxies through the universe trying to work with human forms like us to bring us to a point where we can be part of this galactic council right. they have parameters that you have to be at to fit it um mm -hmm. they now the other side of it is and this is where it might get a bit out of the box for listeners we, we just we, love it love it you know just we like, have been <laughs> we have been an experiment for many 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 thousands of years yeah and it's the, the intergalactic council have brought many um beings to earth um to try and help the human race atlantic atlantis did exist and this is one of the um areas it was over 300,000 years yeah. and it was five one of your books isn't it time. it's on atlantis yeah. yeah so that you know there's a lot um egyptian period the mayans all of that was all of that is like a knock-on effect from atlantis egyptians again parts of the egyptian era was focused with a land with um certain ascension beings being in the physical form and the soul connection um so there's a lot of ways they tried to help us but if you actually look into it it's actually like we're an experiment <laughs> um you know do we have our do we have um self-will are we do we have free will can, can i just you know, um can i just stop you um, sharon because april believes it's all written down and then we can't change events in our lives so is you, that you can correct? change them sorry you can change them yeah there but is certain, the, certain i don't believe everything's written down but there are certain no. things written down here that you are here to yeah. experience you are right so the way they've explained it to me was um last year when i did my soul connection um because they brought that to me to teach i said to them before i go out and teach you need to explain to me what you mean by my soul journey and i always thought it was planned and nothing could be changed okay so they said to me yes things can change so I, they said we need you to go into a meditative state for us to show you so i went into meditation and i saw this blackness spanning out like it was in a grid and they said this is your soul line it was like a silver line running through the middle and i'm very i need things basic i'm not a complicated person so they can't be complicated with me my guides so they said to me right when you got to your second child um you in your higher self when you had the meeting with your other uh, beings that were going to support you like your guides you decided to have severe postnatal, postnatal depression and experience suicidal tendencies <laughs> so i have to laugh and i think why on earth would i want to experience that <laughs> mm. but they said that is what you chose at that time 
So it, I had the child and it started to happen. Mm-hmm. Now, they base our chosen experiences on previous recordings of lives on earth. So other people have had postnatal depression, other people have been in similar circumstances. And they've also got to consider the physical makeup of that being, because we're all different, every human's different. So they base it on a chance of this, this, and this, and we say it's gonna take you three years, okay? After that three years was supposed to be my spiritual awakening. Now, it took me four to five years to get over it. So I said to them, okay, so you've now had to move everything of those two years forward. It's gonna affect different people, different things, um, how you know, and then all of a sudden, I saw thousands of lines shooting out across this grid from that point. And they say, Well, we, we can maneuver and change things. And I'm trying to understand this in my brain, and I'm going, Okay, I said, Okay, I said, Why, right, how on earth do you do that? And they just, they, and this voice just very quietly, calmly said to me, The source does it, as you'd understand as God. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was as simple as that. It didn't have to be complicated. Yeah. The other thing you, all they you said need to is, do is to ask. All yeah. you need to do yeah. is to ask to change, to make the change. But April said, according to astrology, it's all fixed yeah. in your chart. So if, well, if you do fi- ask, yeah. not every yeah, single day, Danielle. Yeah, you I have didn't... free will between one point and yeah. another, but there are certain points you are here to experience. But, yeah. So that was a point that was but supposed if it's to too happen. painful, if it's too painful, do you have to go through it? Or can you say, well, I don't want to do that? I don't think I, was, I wasn't no. even in that spiritual state of mind in that point in my life to even know there was that sort of, that I could ask. But I could, I could now, when I know I won't experience that ever again, any depression, because I'm in a different mindset. Because in the Bible say, it said, yeah. in the Bible it said, ask and thou shalt receive. So even if yes. the chart says you've got to go through this period, you know, like mm-hmm. April talks about Pluto next to Saturn and <laughs> next to, you know, so, you know, mm-hmm. so you can ask for, the, for the, limiting, da- limited damage or something, you know, like. Yeah, well, yes, you can all through your life. You can ask, you know, I ask for protection now. I ask for it all the time. But if there's certain things you need to experience, you will experience it. Because also remember what you experience. Um, other people could be learning from that as well. It could be part of their soul plan to be learning from you. Or it might be your here as an, on the arena learning from what they're experiencing. So there's lots of facets to this journey, <laughs> which is yeah. the other thing they've said to me, which which um, I can see is that um, when they plan something like an awakening, or they, they don't always for so like the awakening that's happening now, they don't always pre, they haven't said 2000 years ago, this is going to happen in 2020. They've based this on the journey of earth up to about nine, um, last year. And then they didn't want another war. How do we make humanity awake again? So they bring a virus. Now, some of those people that have passed over might not have had it in their plan to go at this time. And it, they said to me, it's always soul-based, these decisions. So this, they go back to the higher self, soul-based, and they ask permission, and they agree, and at soul-based they agree, and they can actually choose to leave the earth at an earlier time. So what are your, th- <laughs> sorry, what are your thoughts then about COVID? Because we've only got like two minutes left. What, what oh, are your right. thoughts? Um, well, I've actually written about it in my next book and I can't really put it in two minutes. So um, yeah, just next- quickly, quickly just say, um, right, but we'll have I, to meet I again, Sharon. We'll have to meet it, again and continue yeah, it's, it's, um, this it's conversation. It's to bring humanity into a way of thinking that we're harming Earth and we're harming each other. And it's to stop us in our tracks and make us say, right, okay, we need to change the way we're living. We need to change the way we're thinking. 
Um, but there's going to be many more events in the future that are going to help towards this. So is COVID going to disappear or is it going to carry on? It will disappear eventually, yes. Eventually? How many years yeah. from now? How many <laughs> well, they, years? They just, it's not years. It, it, will, it will go. And there's going to be something else in the future as well. So some people think it's COVID again, but it won't. It'll be a different, different one. Okay. Can I ask you, Sharon, where do you think Atlantis was on the planet? Atlantis was in more than one place. Um, every time the Atlantis experiments happen, they always pick the sort of middle hemisphere where it was good weather and the, the, the luscious part, which, which I always see as like the Mediterranean, lower Mediterranean in that area. But with each, each attempt, there was a disaster of some sort, including an ice age and a flip of the poles over 300,000 years. So it's so, moved. And this, yeah. Oh, so that's a good, because we've only got one minute. Um, oh, so no. that, that's Sorry. really can, good can to know that. Can you give your website, Sharon? Can you yeah. give your Sorry. website and how people can find you? I didn't hear that. Sorry. Uh, your, your website. All right. It's um, www bengalrose.uk and Excellent. I'm also the, oh, sorry, I'm also the founder member member of One Spiritual Move 